Let's begin by getting an overview of the interface and how to quickly get started working in Mudbox 2011. So as we open up a new scene, we'll be presented with a welcome screen asking us what we want to do. Now if we're a new Mudbox user just getting started, there are a number of small movies that will help you get started in any of these different aspects of Mudbox. Okay. We also have the ability to click through to the Mudbox community, which we'll talk about in a second. In the second section, we have a number of starting points that we can use, and these are meshes that are provided by Autodesk with Mudbox so that we can begin sculpting very quickly. We've got a basic head, we've got a car, a uh, human body, the plane is going to be useful for some things that we're going to be doing later, so we have a number of these meshes that we can actually start with, and if you click on any of these, they'll load right into your uh, Mudbox scene. We also, on the right, have the ability to open an existing file that we may have, and we'll also have our recent files listed here on the right. If we don't want to see this uh, when we start up a new scene, all we have to do is check these buttons. Okay, let's go ahead and close this window, and let's take a look at the interface of Mudbox here. So right now you'll see that there's a large 3D viewport, which we're going to be able to use to see our model, to do our sculpting, to do all of our work in. Okay, we have a menu bar at the top. We have a few tabs up here on our viewport. Then we have a few tabs over here and properties down here. And then we have some trays along the bottom. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what's going on with all of this uh, in the interface. So along the top, we have our menus. So we have file, which gives us the ability to uh, open new scenes, uh, to open existing scenes, saving our scenes. We also have the ability to send our geometry to Maya. So that option is in here. And we'll look at that a little bit later on. Also exporting our uh, images and texture files to Photoshop. We can do that here as well. And also importing geometry and exporting. So, and we also have our recent files listed in here as well. Under edit, we have options for selecting different aspects of our scene, for uh, locking it so that we, uh, whatever we do doesn't affect those objects or faces, and then also freezing. It's kind of the same thing. We'll look at that a little bit later as well. Uh, next is create, and this is going to allow us to create uh, cameras, lights. Also under mesh, you'll see that these are the same meshes that we saw listed earlier. Also, we can create new materials and also create selection sets. Under Mesh, this is where we're going to be working with our subdivisions. So that's really the, the power of Mudbox is the ability to subdivide our mesh into the millions of polygons and then do our sculpting uh, on those high resolution meshes. And here's where we're going to find some of the options for that. Also, a new option that we'll look at, flatten to UV space as well. Next is Curves, which will allow you to create uh, and manipulate curves. Display is going to allow us to hide objects, to show different objects, change the display of the geometry in a 3D view, uh, turn off the gradient background, things like that. Maps will allow us to extract uh, normal maps, displacement maps, the new vector displacement maps, uh, ambient occlusion maps, and then also sculpt geometry using those maps. So that's going to be found here. We can create new operations for that. We'll look at that again later on. Render, uh, we've got the ability to save a screen image out, also record a movie if you want to record uh, what you're working on, also creating a turntable movie, you can do that as well. Windows, uh, we have the ability to look at our hotkeys, uh, go to preferences, open up any of these trays or properties at separate windows, and then under help we have the ability to go of course to the mud box help and get uh, take a look at you know one of the terms that we're not familiar with and, and uh, find a little bit more about one of the tools that are giving us some issues maybe. Uh, so there's a lot of options in here to be able to uh, seek out that help, and we'll look at the community uh, in just a second. So as we move down, we'll look at the uh, the 3D view here. In the 3D view, we can hold down Alt to just move around with the middle mouse button, rotate with the left mouse button, push in and out with the right mouse button. So the navigations are going to be pretty familiar to you probably. Uh, next, we'll look at the UV view. So these are showing our UV tiles. So when we have geometry in here, we'll be able to see those UVs here in our UV view. The image browser will allow us to load up folders and look at different images. So let's go ahead and look at, we'll open up a directory here. So here's our textures folder and we can see that we have images over here on the left. We click on those and we can see those. We can also load those in as stamps and stencils and we'll look at that uh, in a little bit. But this gives us the ability to uh, look at all the images that we may be using for textures, for those stamps and for those stencils and things like that. All right. The next tab is going to be the Mudbox community. And this is a great place to kind of interact with other artists. We also have the ability to go in and download or upload stamps, stencils, base meshes, 
uh, a lot of different uh, things that we may need to integrate into our workflow. We can also upload our own. Um, there are also galleries that we can upload our images to. You can uh, look at what art other artists are doing. So you can also look at some uh, user-generated tutorials, uh, maybe create your own, uh, and upload those as well. So this is a great place to go to uh, kind of interact with other Mudbox artists and see what's going on in the Mudbox community. And that's integrated here right into Mudbox. So that's kind of nice as well. Okay, let's go ahead and move on uh, to this area of the interface. And here we're going to see our object list. And this is kind of, you know, kind of like an outliner or a hypergraph or anywhere we, where uh, you might be able to see your different objects listed out. So you can see we have a few cameras in our scene. We have a light. We have a material. Don't have any geometry yet. Uh, we can click on all of these and you can see that that brings up the properties for those down here in this tab. Okay, so we can select any of these objects. And the same thing goes for the material. We can see all our material properties as well. All right, uh, over here we have layers. So this is where we're gonna have our sculpt and paint layers. And we'll talk about sculpting layers and paint layers a little bit later on, but it's just, uh, think of paint layers as just the kind of the different images and channels that we may be using for texture painting. We can have several uh, color images that we use for our texture and blend those together. And so this is where all of those layers will be uh, will be listed and we'll look at that obviously later and then sculpting layers we can have sculpted detail contained within a layer that we can modify as well viewport filters it's going to be more for the on-target presentation and that is uh, when we sculpt and when we paint we want to have the environment as close as possible to the final outcome so if we know that we're going to be rendering in a specific uh, with specific lights in a specific environment we can start to use our viewport filters and some of the the other uh, on-target aspects of Mudbox to really get the environment as close as possible to our final outcome so that when we're painting up our textures and doing all of that uh, we're not surprised when we go in and add the different lights and it looks completely different. We want it to look as, as close as possible uh, when we sculpt it to the final product. So that's going to be in here and we can activate those just by clicking these and we'll look at those later. Okay, as I said these are the properties down here. Uh, at the bottom are our sculpting, painting, posing, and select and move tools. So these are all of our tool trays over here on the left. Okay, and then we have a number of other trays on the right. So we have our sculpting tools, which is what we're going to be using to actually sculpt the high resolution geometry. There are a number of tools here that we'll look at. Next are the paint tools, which we'll be using to paint our textures. There's some new image adjustment tools here that will be useful for us to modify existing textures. We have the new pose tools, which will allow us to really quickly get our uh, model into a nice pose or even just deform the geometry in different ways uh, that may be a little bit easier using these tools. And then we also have the select and move tools, which will allow us to uh, manipulate objects as a whole and also select different faces. Okay. On the right, we have some more trays here. We have the stamp tray, which will allow us to modify our uh, sculpting and painting tools using different images as stamps. Stencils are similar, but we'll be using those to actually paint through instead of uh, using that along our stroke. The fall off will affect, will, uh, we can affect our brush stroke there with the fall off. You can see we can have a sharper fall off uh, or a more gradual fall off. So there are a lot of different fall offs that we can use, and those will be, we can find uh, over here in our properties as well that we can modify those. And then we have some presets, material presets that we can drop on, lighting presets that we can use, and we can save out our own presets as well. And then we have camera bookmarks, which if we have a specific uh, angle that we have on our model, we can go ahead and bookmark that so we can get right back to it. Okay, so that's a quick rundown of the interface uh, here in Mudbox. We talked a little bit about community and about getting help if we need it. Let's go ahead and start to bring in some geometry. So for our project, we're going to be doing a little uh, project with the T-Rex to illustrate some of the, uh, the existing features of Mudbox, uh, some of the pre-existing features, as well as some of the new features in Mudbox 2011. So uh, to bring in some geometry, we can go ahead and go to Create, Mesh, and to bring in one of the starting points, uh, this is where we'll go, and we'll go ahead and grab the T-Rex. Okay, it's going to load that up into the scene. Now there are different ways that we can look at this geometry. If we right-click here in the view, we can see that we have smooth shade on. If we want to just view the flat lighting, we can turn that on. If we want to view the wireframe, we can turn that on. We can also hit W to toggle that, and that will show us the wireframe. So you can see he's a, a fairly low resolution uh, mesh. Okay. We can also choose to turn the lighting off. 
Okay, we can turn the grid on or off. Okay, so there are a number of different options for displaying our uh, geometry. Okay, now we're going to be using this T-Rex as our project. This has a great topology, has uh, great UVs, and it's going to work really well for us uh, as we go through and look at some of these new features. Okay, so what we need to do now is to subdivide our geometry. Right now we don't really have a lot of options when sculpting because of the low resolution. Okay, we can only move uh, each of these points and we're not gonna really going to be get, uh, getting much detail there. So to subdivide our geometry we can go up to Mesh, Add New Subdivision Level. If we go into the options, we can actually go ahead and undo that. Uh, we can actually page down to get back to the uh, lowest level. Uh, if we want to get rid of the highest level, we can go ahead and go down to Delete Highest Level right here. And it says we're on the active level, so there's no more. So we're back down to our lowest level. Now, if we take a look at the UVs, we can see those located here in our UV view. If we want to turn on the options for our Add New Subdivision Level, we can go in here. We can subdivide our UVs, smooth our UVs if we want to. And that will set that for any additional levels that you add. So beyond clicking that subdivide up here, we can also hit Shift D to subdivide. This will give us information on how many polygons we have in our new level. We can also go into the object list, find our T-Rex, and by hitting the plus over here, we're able to now see which level we're on and how many faces uh, that level contains. Okay, You can subdivide again, and you can see our polygon count is going up, and the wireframe is getting more dense as we go. Okay, so now that we've got our subdivi subdivision level set up, we can go up and down. Like I said, we can go page down to go back down to our lowest level. And we can page up to go to our highest level. And it will tell you this is our highest level. So if you want to go any higher, you need to hit Shift D to subdivide that. Okay, so now that we've got our T-Rex subdivided, the next thing we want to do is to look at some of the basics of sculpting as we start to work on our project. So in the next lesson, we'll look at some of the sculpt tools and we'll, using some different sections of this T-Rex, we'll use some of these different tools to get some different effects and just show you how you can get started doing the sculpting for our project. So we'll do that in the next lesson.